Hello, and welcome to the training video for your Telesystem Auto Attendant. I'm Mike Davis, the Director of Customer Operations for Buckeye Telesystem, and in this video we will walk you through step-by-step -step on how to configure the options for your auto attendant so that when a caller is making a call to your business, they're directed to the appropriate company, person, or department. To make changes to your auto attendant, you make those changes via our auto attendant administrative screen that you see in front of you, and for the account, you simply enter in the account number, which is the phone number of your auto attendant. Once you have the number entered in, type in the password or the PIN that was provided to you by Telesystem and press the login button. You would then be taken to the menu summary screen and this will show you a list of all the menus that are associated with your auto attendant. You may see some additional menus here that aren't showing such as a holiday or, or other options that were created on your behalf by Telesystem, but typically you'll see a closed menu, a first name search, a last name search, and an open menu. To change the menu, you simply find the menu that you'd like to change, highlight the name, and click on it. Once you click on it, you'll be taken to the Modify Menu screen, and here you see that I have several options on configuring this auto attendant. The first is the Menu Prompt screen. The Menu Prompt is the audio file that is played to your callers when they call your auto attendant. This would be the file that tells them to press 1 for sales, or 2 for support, or 0 for an operator, etc. The system comes with many standard pre-recorded messages, but with a Telesystem Auto Attendant, you have the ability to configure your own files. So simply hit the Select button next to the Menu Prompt, and you'll see the standard files that come with the Auto Attendant. To hear what they play, uh, sound like, you just simply press the Play button, and they'll play for you. If that satisfies your needs, you simply highlight the name, and it's automatically attached. If you have your own file that you've saved locally on your computer, then all you have to do is hit Choose File and navigate to the file within your computer and once you highlight that file, simply upload it to the system. Once it's uploaded, then you'll be able to have that file play to your callers. The next field you'll see is the Input Timeout and on the Input Timeout field, what this is saying is how long should I wait for a caller to press a digit to do something before I do something else. So for example, the audio file plays how long should I wait before I expect a response from your caller? This is configured to 3. This can be modified to be anywhere from 0 to 60 to 120. It, it's really configurable to whatever you desire your caller to be. And in this example, the system is going to wait 3 seconds after it plays this menu. And if no input is, is received, it's going to then play the menu again. The max timeout count is how many times should a caller time out before I do something else? And in this case, it's set at three, and, and for example, disconnecting the caller after three maximum timeouts. Your next field is the max error count, and an error occurs when a caller presses a digit that is not corresponding to a valid extension. So as you look at this auto attendant, you can see that options four and five have nothing assigned to them. If your caller were to press four or five, that would be considered an error and then the system would count up the number of errors before it does something, and in this case, three. Those are called events, and you can see here that we have digits and events, and we'll talk about the events tab shortly on, on how you can control what happens when an input timeout, a max timeout, or a max error occurs. Your barge in checkbox allows your callers to press a button any time during the greeting. If this is not selected, then your callers must listen to the entire menu before they can make a selection. Now we go down to the digits, and you can see that you have options available from zero all the way through pound. You have an action type, an action target, and a prompt. So in this auto attendant, they have configured that the zero will transfer to the operator. By pressing one, you'll get a direct transfer. And a direct transfer is a transfer to an employee's desk or a user's desk within your system. It will ring their handset that is sitting on their desk. By pressing option two, I go to a voicemail transfer, and a voicemail transfer sends the caller directly to someone's voicemail box bypassing their endpoint ringing. This is really useful if you have a system-wide voicemail box for your callers, uh, and in this case you could say press 2 to leave a message in our voicemail system, and it will take them right to the greeting when they press the, the, the 2. On 3, this is configured to go to a dialog. Go to dialog is simply saying, take me to another menu. So in this case, I'm taking them to the first name search menu. This will give them the ability to type in the first few digits of a person's first name and then be directed to that person. 
you can also configure it to be last name. And to change the action type, you simply click on that box and you'll be taken to an action box field. And you can see here, I can take them to my close menu, my first name search, my last name search. So I'm going to go ahead and select on last name search and press select. Now you can see that the dialog box has been changed to last name search and when they press the option 3 when they call they will enter the first few digits of the person's last name and then when the system makes a match it will send them to that caller. Some other options that are available to you you have the ability to reprompt and on a reprompt what that's saying is just play the menu prompt again for the caller. You have the ability for an external transfer and an external transfer will transfer your caller to a number that is outside of your system. So it's not someone that's sitting at, at a desk within your company. It could be uh, anyone that has the ability to receive an incoming call. You also have the ability to disconnect a caller. When you configure an action type and an action target, you can also have a prompt play to that caller. And we would strongly suggest that you record a greeting that says something to the effect of, there'll be silence as we transfer your call because as the auto attendant is, is analyzing the digits that your caller entered there will be silence as it's transferring that call to the next user sometimes people will think that they've been disconnected or, or something has happened to their call so we strongly suggest that you have a prompt recorded that says there will be a momentary silence as we transfer your call and just like adding your menu here you simply press this select button you can select from the files that exist or, as we mentioned previously, choose the file that you'd like to have and upload it to the system. On the Events tab, so we talked about the timeout, the timeout count, and the max error count. This is where you define what happens when these criteria are met. So, for example, an error. If someone were to press a digit that does not have an action type, the system is set to reprompt and play a greeting that says, I'm sorry, that's an invalid extension, please try again, and it plays the menu prompt again. On a timeout, if they don't enter any digits after the menu plays, then the system again will simply play the menu prompt back to the caller. On a max error, which we've set at 3 here, the system will disconnect the caller from the auto attendant, but play them a greeting that says, thank you for calling, goodbye. So if the caller were to press a, an error three times, the system will disconnect the caller from the auto attendant. Max timeout, we have our max timeout set to 3, so again, this is set to disconnect and to say thank you for calling goodbye when a caller has an error time, timeout maximum count of three. Keep in mind that these are all configurable, so if I did not want to disconnect a caller, but let's say I wanted to transfer them to an operator, all I simply have to do is highlight the action type and say that I'm transferring it to the operator. Now obviously, I would want to get rid of the greeting because I don't want to tell them that I'm hanging up on them, so I would delete that so that no prompt is played and maybe play my greeting that says, there'll be a moment of silence as we transfer your call. That is pretty much it for configuring your auto attendant. The one thing you do want to do is when you make all your configuration changes, you do want to make sure you hit save so that all of your options have been saved. So that is the first step in making any changes to your auto attendant when, when people call to have them go to areas that you'd like them to go to. If you want to learn more about how your auto attendant uh, can make additional changes such as schedule options or nested or sub menus, I invite you to click on any of the training videos that you'll find on the Auto Attendant website and we'll walk you through step by step on how to do that. Again, thanks for your time and good luck in setting up your Telesystem Auto Attendant.